All right, we're back. This is the um, USB switch that we were doing before. So have a look at, see if that comes up right. See, so yeah, I even shrinky dinked it. I don't know if you guys know what that means, but basically just yeah, uh, shrink wrapped it, hot glued it, so things don't go anywhere. And I was wondering before why on earth I did the pin configurations like this. And then I realized when I went to check the motherboard specifications for the ports, it's so that they perfectly match up with the USB socket uh, plugs on the board. So there was actually some uh, method to the madness. All right, this here is my recovery, one of my recovery servers. Yeah, let's get the lid off that. Nothing profoundly amazing about them other than just that they're compact. Uh, they're running off a mini ITX board. These are J1800 boards. I've also tried the J1900s. Uh, they're just a little Celeron um, CPU on there. Very simple boards, but the only downside I found with them is they only support two um, SATA ports, but I got around that by making them boot off USB stick. Now these are USB 3 sticks, I plug them into the USB 2 port, but because they're USB 3 rated they tend to run a bit faster just simply because the flash is a little bit better quality. Alright, so we need to put this in here such that it uh, controls the power going to this here. This is our loadable dock. Uh, this is actually a two and a half inch laptop drive converter to three and a half inch bay. Uh, at first I wasn't sure whether this was going to work out doing it this way or whether I should have a dual bay that you can buy which will let you put two and a half or three and a half into here. But I found these little converters are actually very useful, very easy to use. Uh, you put your two and a half inch drive in there, you push that down, it pops it back out. Excellent, works well. And if you want to do some in circuitry modifications there on the uh, lines, you can, but I never bothered. All right, so we basically, let's see, get that there. Need to get this power supply out. Because they don't use a lot of power, I can just leave these on pretty much 24-7. I'm running Ubuntu server on them. Uh, that's about it. That's all I need. It's got D-Rescue, a couple of other tools that I use. Uh, take this out. Come on. It is definitely a bit of a tight squeeze in there. But that's okay cute little power supplies. I've got uh, pretty good ventilation. I've found I've never had overheating issues with the power supply. What I have added to them though, or to the case, is a uh, 12 centimeter, 120 millimeter fan. Just fits perfectly into these particular cases and gives me a bit of more of a airflow, which keeps the hard drive cooler. Now, this particular one has got a three gig, uh, three gig, what am I, in the 1990s? Three terabyte drive in it. My other one, the primary one, has an eight terabyte drive in it. I'll probably put an eight terabyte in this as well sometime later now that I'm going to be able to use it with the switching. Uh, just a case of getting the money as always. In an unusual twist, the eight terabytes used to be 329 Australian. Now they're uh, about 389. Alright, the relay switch. I'll just simply run away. There we go. Into there. This portion here. Just uh, keep all the connectors aligned. Let's go down here. This just takes up one half of the two port header. Alright. I'm just going to double check that this how it is. Ground, yes, D plus, D minus, and VCC. VCC. Ah, oh, yeah, which is 5 volts in this case, which is just right for these. Okay, so that's connected up now. This goes into the back of the dock hard drive. 
there. And yeah, like I said, this is going to be a tight squeeze. It's nothing going to be pretty about this. Alright, let's take that down there. Get our power supply back in, which is going to require a bit of judicial, uh, judicious rather, convincing. There we go. Alright. Screw the power supply back in right away. These are really good cases. They're available quite cheap. I think I picked them up for about $79, $80 Australian. That was with the power supply. Uh, unfortunately, I can't find them anymore, which is typical. So I managed to get three, and uh, f thankfully only needed uh, to use the two. The third one I'm using on a Windows machine that is running off another low power micro ATX board. I just use it for the occasional time when I need to do something Windowsy, like uh, loading up an iPhone new firmware or something like that. Ah, okay. Now we can't let anything go into this area here because that's where the, let's see where the drive will go. The loader bay, I, um, you've got to buy these separate, these loader bays, obviously not with the case. Okay. That's where I just had a whistle. Okay, I've got my uh, very messy, unclean, dirty, whatever you want to call it, set up. Let's uh, see if we can power this up and see if the USB thing works. Ubuntu. Now I really hope that I've actually got the power switch software in this. Okay. Uh, what's my password? And it seems we fortunately do have the power switch software here. So let's see if we can get the status of it. That'll have to be root. Showing everything on. And is that true? Well, lo and behold, there we go. The lights are actually on. <laughs> Didn't even know. There we go, switch that off. Uh, you might be able to see them there. I'm just going to twist that back. Let's see if we can turn it off. Power switch off. There we go. The tiny little red light that I didn't care about while making it because I wanted it to be dim anyway. So hopefully you can just see that. And on. What we can do is we just put a drive in there. Make sure it works. Uh, some random 2 terabyte that I've got. Got a lot of these floating around. Okay. Oops. Someone left that on. Okay. And I don't know if you can quite see it there, but it's detected. Switch off. One. So what we'll do is run the D message. This one doesn't have the nice format output. Oh, it looks like I've got to upgrade the USB stick on this one uh, to the latest Ubuntu. But, yeah. 
at so if we let's see what we're currently on, switch off. And we can see it's shutting down the link. It sort of takes it a while, so it kind of goes, are you there? Are you there? And then it gives up. It says, no, nope, you're not there. Alright, so now we turn it back on. I should spin it up. There we go. It's all good. There we go. Great, so this is working. So now I can actually put this into more full time use rather than it languishing around in the workshop because it didn't have this. Without this what I was having to do is actually power the machine up and down manually as a whole before I pull the drive out because um, even though you can get away with it I really prefer not to um, pull the drives out while they're hot as in running. So, uh, Alright, well that's everything then. Well, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.